Good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC 103 New Testament survey. Today we're going to study on the letter to Philippians. Um, even before I could start, let me share the presentation. Give me a minute. Okay. I hope everyone can see it. Yes. Okay. So the Philippians is one of the prison uh, four prison epistles that Apostle Paul wrote. Most scholars believe that this letter was written in uh, 62 AD while Apostle Paul was in prison. And uh, Apostle Paul wrote to the body, the believers in Philippi, with whom he shared a close partnership and a sp special affection. He also addressed the letter to the church elders and deacons. So overall, the book of Philippians is known as the book of joy and rejoicing, where we see the joy of the Christian experience is the dominant theme which runs through the book of Philippians. Been said that, let's look into the history of Philippi. So Philippi was founded as a gold mining center and became a city of prominence because it was the main route to Rome from the Western world. Philippi was a chief city of that part of Macedonia, even though Thessalonica was the capital city of that Roman province. And Philippi was a Roman colony. As a result of being a Roman colony, the people of the city were Roman citizens. The city was a model of Roman law and education. So people were noted to be noble, educated, and disciplined in nature. The city did not officially allow a synagogue to be part of it, but it was somewhat anti-Semitic. Yeah, so uh, let's look into the background of the book of Philippi. So when we look at Acts chapter 14, verse 27, we see that Paul circulated through the, uh, the region of Galatia in his first missionary journey, and he planted a few churches there. And he came back to Antioch of Syria and rested. He spent about three years then after that, he decides again with Barnabas saying that let's go into the places where we plant a church in Galatia and we'll minister and strengthen them. And there's a drift between Barnabas and Apostle Paul about taking John Mark along with, along with them in the second missionary journey, for which Apostle Paul did not agree. So Barnabas takes John Mark and he heads towards a different direction on ministry. And Apostle Paul takes Silas along with them and he visits the same places where he planted the church in the first missionary journey. So as he visited, he wants to extend the territory to the new places. But then when he decide to move on to the next region after Galatia, let me move on to the map. So here we see uh, the first missionary journey. They were in Antioch of Syria. They moved to Tarsus, Derby, Lystra, Iconium, Antioch and Pisidia. And when Apostle Paul decides to move into Asia to minister here, he was tarried here by the Holy Spirit. So um, when we read uh, in Acts chapter 16, verse 6 and 7, we see that, let me turn to Acts chapter 16. Okay, I'm there almost. Yeah, Acts chapter 16, verse 6 and 7 says, Now, when they had gone through Pergia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So what happened? The Spirit did not permit them. Reading further. Okay. So, so passing by Mysia, they came down to Toras, can you see Toras here? Yeah. They passed through Messiah and they came to Toras. And verse 9, 
chapter 16, verse 9 in the book of Acts, it says, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. So what happened? From Toras, they went directly to Macedonia, that is to Neapolis, and eventually they went to Philippi, that is here. Can we all see? I'm just moving my cursor. Yes, it's there. So eventually they went there. So as Apostle Paul sensed the Holy Spirit was direct him to Macedonia, he went there as per the vision that he get. He just took an action immediately. He sensed very clearly that he, the next place that he needs to minister is in Macedonia. And eventually he arrived at Philippi. And um, as it was the foremost city of that part of Macedonia, it's a colony. So when Paul and Silas arrived in Philippi, since there was no synagogue, they started the ministry in the riverside as it was a coastal region and when they started in the riverside they came across the lady called Lydia when we read from uh, chapter 16 verse 13 to 15 you see and on the sabbath day we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made so i feel like certain jews gathered together there and they met to pray and we sat down and spoke to the women who met there now a certain woman named lydia heard us she was a seller of purple from the city of tyatira who worshipped god the lord opened a heart to heed the thing spoken by Paul. See, there's a door that is open for them to minister through this women. Now, verse 15, when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my home and stay. So she persuaded. So God met their need okay he opened up their heart opened up their place uh, you know for them to stay and uh, pray fellowship at their place and furthermore when we read uh, verse 16 to 19 we see that our apostle paul went about preaching and ministering to people on the street and this stirred the holy spirit was um who was present with them, stirred uh, the people that were hearing to the message. And he also eventually went and delivered a young lady who was possessed with spirit of divination. When she was delivered by Apostle Paul, he cast that spirit out of her. The master of that girl was in a problem. He didn't get any more business because that spirit uh, was cast out from this girl. So what did the master do? He dragged Apostle Paul and Silas before the city magistrate and accused them for being Jews and preaching and teaching and converting the Roman people. So because of the city opposition towards the Jews, Paul and Silas were, breed, were beaten brutally. They were thrown into prison without a trial. Now, furthermore, when we read um, verse 25 to 34, we see that um, now Apostle Paul is put in a deep prison. I would like to read that, okay? 25 to 34. Okay, let me read. At least I'll read the first two verses, 25 and 26. But at the midnight, Apostle Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. Everyone's chains were loosed. So what happened? When Apostle Paul and Silas were in the prison, nothing changed them, nothing stopped them from ministering to the people. They were filled with joy. They sang out of the joy. They praised God. When they praised God in the situation, they did not give heed to the situation or circumstances. But when they sang and praised God, they rejoiced. The heaven responded to them. 
the heaven responded to their praise and verse 26 says there was a great earthquake that came into the foundation of uh, it shook the foundation of the prison and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chain were released this is what God can do to us when we sing and praise and rejoice over our situation. God can deliver us. Heaven will respond to our praise, to our prayer. So Paul and Silas, uh, you know, eventually were released from the prison uh, because the Roman uh, they, the Roman government discovered that uh, Paul was a Roman citizen. So they want to. Um, secretly release him but apostle paul knowing the rules and regulation of the roman government he forced the officials to release him publicly because he was beaten and public and arrested front of all so he asked them to release with the public issue so then they did that apostle paul picked up where he left in the house he picked up the ministry where he left at the house of lydia and that's where where the church the new church was meeting and then in uh, we see how luke followed up because the letter of acts was written by luke so luke was also in touch with apostle paul whenever apostle paul came to philippi or macedonia we see luke was in the neighboring city came and served apostle paul in the ministry so he was with him in the beginning stages of this church so that's how you know he could write in detail in the book of acts and we also see that um, he he should be noted that whenever apostle paul uh, you know was in need he was there to help him that's why many places he write in detail how apostle paul was helped by whom what are the circumstances that he was put in he could uh, 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 record in detail in the book of acts and also when we see the church the philippi church was a joyful church which was very uh, close with apostle paul because when they saw the need of apostle paul when he was in the prison they sent gifts financially they helped him and they supported him in different occasions and even when apostle paul was at the ministry at thessalonica they had helped him and uh, we also see that paul undoubtedly uh, visited the church of philippi on the uh, you know on the third missionary journey because in one of the uh, scriptures in uh, in philippians he, he clearly says that that is 224 he says that i trust in the lord that i will come and visit you shortly he had heart for this church heart for the love of people whom he nurtured built and grown and um, they were imitating christ in a much closer way they could follow christ they could follow the teaching of apostles 